Um, hello. Uh, I'm shaking. <laughs> hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna do my heaters on, and you can hear it. Eat. <laughs> I'll wait. Don't worry. I'll wait. Hi everyone. Ignore the heater. It'll come off soon. I'm just gonna... And it turned off. Technology. Amazing. Hello everyone, um, I'm having a good day today, which is surprising, because two days ago was not having a good day. Significantly terrible. I had a panic attack, so I went to the thrift store and I bought a bunch of books. Um, yeah. So, I'm just gonna get right into the meat and the goodness of this book haul, and then I'm probably gonna go off in a million tangents, so be prepared for no concept, not concept? No context whatsoever. Alright, if you, these are books that I'm interested in, by the way. These aren't, like, books that are, like, super popular. And I have really no idea what most of these books are about. Um, they're just pretty, and I wanted to buy them. So, I did. Ha. I'm an adult. Not really. I'm also really broke, but I keep buying books anyways. Okay, so the first book that I picked up, I bought for $1.99 at the my local thrifty shop. Um, it is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. So, if you don't know about this book, it's a classic in, um, horror literature. I don't really know what it's about. Like, I know vaguely because Ariel Bosset talked about it, and if you don't know her, she is a other booktube channel. Uh, check her out, because she is pretty awesome. If you, you probably already know her if you're watching me, because... She's like, booktube queen, duh. Um, <laughs> anyways, this is short, so I figured it would be a nice thing to read. And it's like, it's foundational in like, just horror, the genre in general. There's been so many different like, iterations. What happened? So many different iterations of this book um, in plays, movies, cartoons. I remember watching Scooby Doo and there was a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in Scooby Doo. Um, <laughs> Have a good time. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, many reiterations. I've grown up with horror and this has been in it's it's influenced it's like so influential in the horror genre and it's been in like everything that I've watched I actually did a paper about dissociative identity disorder in um school and I use this as an example of how horror sometimes stigmatizes mental health issues and you know it is pretty messed up but I'm interested to actually read this and see how it um, is portrayed. Also, it just, it's short and seems so good. So I'm super excited. This has been on my list with, um, what's his name? Cthulhu, that dude. I'm, I forgot his name, which is really horrible. But the Cthulhu dude. <laughs> I want to read him too. Okay, second book I got is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. Um, it is a novel. It is a novel. Look at the cover. Very nice. Um, so basically, there is a main character named Ruth. I don't, it's, I don't know if it's the author, and it's supposed to be like, is this a fictional, non-fiction book, you know? 
and basically they find a Hello Kitty lunchbox with the journal of an 11 year old? 16 year old Japanese girl named Nao Yasutani um, who suspects that it's debris from Japan's 2011 tsunami. tsunami. Basically it's just um, this person reading. I actually... Ruth? Can Ruth be a boy name? I'm not gonna assume their pronouns. You know, they just read this journal about this Japanese girl and it's, I don't know, it's supposed to be kind of like tragic. It also tells the story of her 104 Zen Buddhist nun, um, who is her great-grandmother. But that's the, that's the, that's the now. Now? Now. Yeah. It's the, it's the little Japanese girl's, um, grandmother, not, not Ruth's grandmother, I think. But it seems super good. I read the last page because I am a dork. Um, it says, please burn me and don't file me. Please sprinkle me in some nice body of water or the garbage. Maybe that way I'll end up in the correct parallel universe to meet up with daddy. Those are baller last words, if I do say so myself. Also, you can find the, the bibliography right next to the last page. And I was an English major. I'm, I'm working, I'm still working on school, but... I, like, I get super excited when I see a bibliography. I just love research. I usually don't look into the research, but I love that it's there and providing, you know, it's an option. It's like the guac on the side that, like, sometimes you don't use, but you just appreciate that it's there. Yeah, this is the guac. It has some, some good, some good stuff. I'm really excited to read this. It seems really cool, and I don't know if it's, I haven't read a lot. I don't know if this author is Japanese, actually. Um, but... Like, the the weird storyline and kind of, like, the out of place and, like, just kind of, like, odd um, plot kind of reminds me of a Murakami novel. And I've read two Murakami novels and I've loved both of them in weird ways. Like, I've been a little let down with both of them, but I haven't read, like, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicles or, is it 1984? IQ84? Uh, I don't know the name of the novel and why I run, it's like the memoir he did. So I haven't read like his most popular books, but I read The Strange Library and not Norwegian Wood, the other one. Sputnik Sweetheart. I think I have Norwegian, no I don't have Norwegian Wood. I have something else, but I have another book by him and I have high hopes. I think he's a brilliant writer, just certain parts where it falls short and I am... I'm not sure if it's just the translator that maybe is making me kind of feel off about this or um, the, I don't know, just the writing itself isn't that appealing to me. But like the, the plot and the little little tidbits of like magical realism and like just like mystery in his books are really fascinating and it really makes your mind kind of go wild with um, all the possibilities. Anyways, um, this cover is pretty sweet. I don't know if the author is Japanese. I kind of hope the author is Japanese because I read Memoirs of a Geisha who is by not a Japanese man a or not a Japanese woman but a, a white man and I don't know how I feel about that. I talked to my dad a little bit we discussed how kind of weird that is but I don't know tell me if you have any opinions if you read one mem uh, if you have read Memoirs of a Geisha like what your opinions are about that and about, I don't know, white people writing from the perspective of um, another culture, especially such a prominent female one in Japanese culture. So, I don't know. Um, it was a pretty decent book. I had a good time. Um, this book was two ninety nine at the thrift store. On to another book. So, this book is called The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas. Um, look how freaking pretty it is. Beauty guru. Beauty guru it. Is it too bright? I don't know. Um, it has a bunch of like comic stuff in the flaps, which is really nice. And it has a little comic of the, of the, I'm assuming the author. This is The Three Musketeers. I, again, um, this is a very famous book. I didn't know it was a book. I thought it was a play. Um, I only know about this because there's a Mickey Mouse version of The Three Musketeers that I used to watch, uh, while growing up, where Goofy, Donald, and Mickey are The Three Musketeers, and I don't know. It's, I, I, all I remember is All for One and One for All, 
and that that's it that's all I know but I got this because I figured it'd be something that maybe me and my dad could read and the cover and the editions really really beautiful um I like reading stuff with my dad because he has kind of we don't have the same mind we have very different points of views he was born in like 1960 something and I was born in the 90s so like our opinions uh <laughs> like politics and uh, feminism and gender and all of this are very different so I like to read the same books as him or I like to read similar books and then we talk and we kind of co can conspire uh, I got him to read or remove one's own after we had an argument about androgyny <laughs> it, he likes it he really likes it which is good because I don't know how you can't like Virginia Woolf unless you're like Jewish because she was anti-semitic which is semantic semantic you know it's one of those words that you read but you can't say anyways uh, she's a brilliant feminist for her time. <laughs> On to Three Musketeers. It's a really thick book and I'm actually quite worried because I do not like um, books with really masculine characters where like or it's like nobility or I do in certain situations but I hate when people use like society's structure as a way to move plot. You know I read Pride and Prejudice and I know people are gonna fucking they're gonna they're gonna hate me but I didn't really care for Pride and Prejudice because the whole plot was like miscommunication and was all kind of not it just wasn't really my thing I think I'm gonna reread it when I get older because I know it ages well because a lot of older women love the book maybe I'll grow into it maybe I won't who knows maybe I'm just not made for that book um, but anyways I'm gonna give it a go. It's a, it's a thick book too. How many pages? Oh, there's a bunch of notes. Awesome. I love notes. Um, I should probably have some historical background on this because it's French. I learned, and I'm not French or very um familiar with French history other than like the French Revolution and Marie Antoinette. But this is written in. I don't know. We'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> and then we have my last book. Okay, so here's the situation. <laughs> so, I got this book, and it's called The Stranger in the Mirror, Disassociation, The Hidden Epidemic by Marlene Steinberg, MD, and Maxine Schnall. Look how pretty that is. Okay, here's the situation. I don't know if you could tell. So, I sometimes sleep on the floor because my back hurts on my bed, because I sleep on my stomach, and I was moving from my bed to my, my, my floor and my blanket knocked over um, a glass of vitamin C, like immune C, you know that, that supplement where it's like vitamin C in liquid water form because, I don't know if you could tell, <coughs> but I'm sick. So I was trying to get all that vitamin C I could get to recover so I don't sound like I have two fucking cotton balls shoved up my nose. I was not lucky. Um, I was lazy and I put my books off of my bed straight onto the ground and then my cup just decided to swishy splash all the way down. The tips of this are dyed red. I don't know how. I don't know what's going on but we might. My headphones are on the floor. Hopefully they're not ruined too. But it was in, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning and I didn't know what fell on my books and I just left the cup there because I was like, I, it's 3 in the morning, I'm so tired, I just want to go to sleep, my back hurts, Good night. And vitamin C supplement smells like piss. So this book no longer smells like a good old fashioned paperback book. It smells like somebody took a wee right on it. Somebody just pissed on it. And that's not great. I'll still read it because I know it's not pee. I don't think I'll ever give it to anybody. Or maybe I will and just prefer it. Or I'll just give them the book and be like, I did not pee on this. No cats peed on this. It is, it is vitamin C juice. 
not orange juice, vitamin C supplement juice. Anyways, this book um, is about disassociation. I talked about dissociative identity disorder via Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I wrote a paper about it. I wrote that paper because I am a person who disassociates a lot. I have really bad disassociation, which is pretty crippling. Uh, I My mental health is like such a big part of my life now because I was recently, I was recently hospitalized for my mental health, which is like maybe TMI, but like I'm just going to share it anyways because in my book it's nothing to be ashamed about. I recently had to like stop going to school because I had too many panic attacks um, a week and it wouldn't let me sleep, which wasn't fun. So now I'm kind of venturing out into the world as a mentally ill person, but now I have the official diagnosis. Um, and disassociation is like the scariest thing that's ever happened to me, and I think it's the scariest thing ever. I personally have anxiety, a low-key panic disorder, depression, and major disassociation, and they all kind of feed into each other to make me kind of suicidal. I, I don't like the word suicidal, but it's I guess what fits now, it's what I'm labeled as, it's what my therapist is like helping me deal with. Um, and I was wondering if this book would help me. I don't know why I'm, it's like I'm asking you, like, hello, can you fix my problems? Um, no, but this book seems really interesting and seems like it could shed a lot of light. I read some of the Goodreads reviews. I didn't want to read this book because with my anxiety being as bad as it is, uh, sometimes I could become kind of like a hypochondriac so if I read about some disassociation symptoms that I don't have and then I all of a sudden get I'll know it came from this but also if I, I there are some symptoms I have of disassociation that like doctors just don't talk about like it's not listed like the the main thing for people with disassociation is it feels like my life's a movie, like nothing's real, I feel real detached, it's like an out-of-body experience, but there's so much more than that that people don't talk about, and it's literally like you're on drugs, but you haven't taken a fucking thing, and I would know about drugs. <laughs> not, not like hard drugs, because I never did that, but like, I'm a, I was a college student, like I'm, you know, there are mandatory things for college students, and basically, it's like that, but you don't do anything, it just happens. And I really don't like it. It's super, super scary, and it kind of makes you think that you're living the same day over and over again. So I'm going to consult my doctor, but if you, if anybody out there also has dissociation, what's up? Stick around. Maybe I won't die. <laughs> That's really morbid. But, um, stick around, you know? Um, hopefully I read this book and I give it to my friends and family so they can at least try to understand some of what I'm going through. Um, cause it's really hard just to be like, oh yeah, my life feels like a movie. Cause people think that's cool or that's awesome. And a lot of people have been like, you're blessed spiritually cause you're, you're like more close to the spirit world. I'm like, boy, I'm just trying to fucking live. If you don't shut your goddamn mouth, I'm so fucking scared. And you're telling me that I'm blessed because I, you know, I'll take it. Like I am blessed to be still alive and to be given the challenges that I have, but it'd be a lot easier if I didn't have them, you know? Anyways, so Disassociation, this is a pretty cool book. I feel so sorry to this book that I spilled something on it. Honestly, I didn't know I spilled something on it, and I, I hate that this is going to be my first booktube video, and people are going to be like, ah, you're a spiller, you disrespect books, uh, and to be fair, I do spill a lot on my books, and I try not to. It's the same with, like, your laptop when you're not supposed to eat. But, like, if you don't eat while you're on your laptop, like, how, like, you're not gonna, well, how are you gonna watch YouTube videos without a snack? You know? It has to happen. Then again, I am a girl who has gotten yogurt all stuck in my space bar, so maybe I should just not. Um... Anyways, I was just thinking about books and how in sustainability and I just, I don't like books that are digital unless it's manga or fanfiction where I can read online. I 
really like um, physical books. I like the way they smell, like the way they feel. I like just flipping through the pages, like annotating, highlighting. And you can do that on a Kindle. I mean, it doesn't smell like a book, but you can buy a candle that smells like a book. So I've been like, I've compromised to buying used books and only buying brand new books if I am in a discount shop, like, you know, like, um, like a warehouse with a bunch of books, or if I am, like, I specifically want that book and I'm going out to get it, you know, I don't want to waste money. I'm trying to be like that with all clothing, too, where I get them used because I want to be more sustainable, and if I, like, I need bras and underwears and specific, um, things, then I'll try to buy it from a store that is, like, eco-friendly and sustainably, like, ecologically responsible. Like, not H&M, but, like, another place. I'm slowly, I'm slowly taking steps towards that. And I was just thinking about how we can make booktube more environmentally friendly. And I think buying used books would be a good answer. But if you have a better answer, go ahead. Because, um, it'd be really a lot harder holding a Kindle up and just swiping, you know? Because glare and all that. Anyways. Bye everyone, hopefully you had a good time hearing me talk and interact with, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have any concerns, I have low self-esteem so like maybe not going on me, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, leave a comment, do, do, do what you want, ask if you want something from me other than money, cause I don't have that, <laughs> but if you want like, compliments or a specific video to be made not like anything creepy like foot pics I ain't doing that I'm sorry like I need money but like I got I got some 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 boundaries you know anyways bye dudes